Hello friends, welcome back to Medical Stranger. Today our topic is dentin and dentinogenesis. First, we have to study the physical properties of dentin. Dentin, its main color is light yellow and its thickness is about 3 to 10 millimeter while the hardness order is in between the enamel and the bone. Now, let's move on to the chemical properties of dentin. Inorganic substance present in the canteen is about 70% and it is mainly hydroxyapatite crystals. The hydroxyapatite crystals chemical formula is CA3PO4HOLD2.CAOH2. Also traces of fluoride and carbonates are also present. Now moving on to the organic portion that is 20% and water 10%. This organic matter is mainly type 1 collagen. Friends, it's very important question in Viva that is type 1 collagen. Also, there are ground substances and growth factors. Now, let's study the ground substances. Mainly, there are three subtypes of ground substances. These are proteoglycans, for example, chondroitin sulfates, decorin, and biglycans. Next, we have the glycoproteins. These are uh, DSP, that is dentin sialoprotein, osteonectin and osteopontin. Third, we have phosphoproteins. These are DPP, that is dentin phosphoprotein and GLA proteins. Next, we move on to the growth factors. There are mainly four growth factors. These are TGF, that is transforming growth factor, FGF, that is fibroblast growth factor, uh, IGFs, that is insulin-like growth factors, and BMPs, that is bone morphogenic proteins. Okay. Now, we have the next topic that is what are the structures of dentin, okay. There are mainly five structures of dentin. First, we have the dentinal tubules. Next, we have the peritubular or intratubular dentin. Third, we have the intertubular dentin. Fourth, we have predentin. And finally, the fifth one is the odontoblastic process. Now, we will study each of these five structures in detail first we have the dentinal tubers what are these dentinal tubers these are the characteristics of a normal dentin also these dentinal tubers follow gentle wavy course in crown and it is s shaped in root it's a very important question that is it is s shaped in root now also it's it is perpendicular to the dentin enamel junction and dentino cemental junction but it is straight near root and cusp tip also, many uh, of these are extended several mm into the dentin enamel junctions and these are called as the enamel spindles. We will uh, again study enamel spindles in the upcoming lectures. Next, we will have the peritubular or intertubular dentin. What are these? These are the zones of hypermineralized dentin. Friends, it is very important that it is a hypermineralized structure which surround the dentinal tubules. Next, we have uh, these are formed by the deposition along the inner aspect of dentinal tubules. So, these are deposited along the inner aspect of dentinal tubules. Its width is highest at the dentinal junction and its width decreases in a pulpward direction. Also, there are many important structures like laminal limitants and periodontal spaces. We will study this in detail in next slide. That is what are laminal limitants. These laminal limitants are the thin organic membrane See, okay these are thin organic membrane and they are rich in glycosaminoglycans okay and they are seen over the inner aspect of peritubular dentin they are over the inner aspect of peritubular dentin next we will have the periodontoblastic space what are these periodontoblastic space these are the space between the odontoblast process and the peritubular dentin okay these are the space between the odontoblastic process and the peritubular dentin this uh, space mainly consists of dentinal fluids, okay. This is mainly called dentinal fluids and this makes the basis of the dentinal sensitivity. In the upcoming slides, we will study in details the dentinal sensitivity. Now, moving on to the next part, we have the peritubular or the intertubular dentin. Sorry, the intertubular dentin, okay. We will already cover the peritubular dentin. That is what are intertubular dentin. This intertubular dentin lie between the dentinal tubules and form the major bulk of the teeth. Okay. 
its thickness is highest at the dentin enamel junction it's a very important question that is its thickness is highest at the dentin enamel junction these are mainly formed by the cell bodies of odontoblast and consist of type 4 collagen also it's a very important question that is it has the type 4 collagen and the inorganic part is hydroxyapatite crystals next we will move on to the pre-dentin what are these pre-dentin pre-dentin are the first form dentin okay these are the first form dentin and they are not mineralized okay they are located adjacent to the pulp tissue it's very uh, common that they are must be located along the pulp tissue because they are the first form dentin also uh, these uh, collagen fibers undergo mineralization and pre-dentin then becomes dentin new layer of the pre-dentin forms around the pulp circumpulpally okay this formed in a circumpulpal manner next move on on to we'll have the odontoblast process what are these odontoblast process these are the cytoplasmic extensions of the odontoblast okay and they are resides in the peripheral pulp also they have the largest diameter near the pulp and some may traverse the entire thickness of the dentin uh, it also divides near the dentin enamel junction and it may also extend to the enamel in the in the form of enamel spindles so we have already learned two structures that is what are enamel spindles in the uh, uh, dentinal tubules and in the odontoplastic process now moving on we will classify dentin on the basis of three types that is on the basis of developmental pattern we have three types that is primary dentin secondary dentin and the tertiary dentin now we will study primary dentin in details this primary dentin mainly formed prior to the and the during active tooth eruption it may be formed prior and during the active tooth eruption this primary dentin is further subdivided into mantle dentin and the circumpulpal dentin now the question is what are these mantle dentin okay this mantle dentin are the first form dentin in the crown friends it's very important to remember that these are the first form dentin in the crown portion also these are less mineralized and are softer uh, these are composed mainly of the type 3 collagen fibers that is type 3 collagen fiber is also called von Koff's fiber it's a very important question in the viber table that is what are von Koff fibers next we will move on to the circumpulpal dentin what are the circumpulpal dentins these are the main dentin which form the bulk of the tooth these are more mineralized and are so harder Collagen fibers are much smaller and more closely packed here. Now we will move on to the secondary dentin. What are the secondary dentins? These are the narrow band of dentin bordering the pulp. Okay. It is formed after the tooth completion. Okay. It is formed after the root completion. And it contains fewer bundles than the primary dentin. Also, these are formed more slowly and not uniformly it protects the pulp from the exposure in the older teeth okay it mainly protects the pulp in the older teeth it's a, its main function now we'll move on to the tertiary dentin which is also called irregular secondary dentin or reactive dentin or the reparative dentin now what are these tertiary dentin these dentin are mainly formed as a result of stimuli like attrition abrasion erosion cavity preparation pathologic response etc it is different from the other forms of dentin as it contains a specific uh, component which is called as dentin phosphofyrin dentin phosphofyrin is absent here it's a very important as for the viber question that is dentin phosphofyrin is absent in the tertiary dentin now we'll move on to the types of dentin on the basis of pattern of mineralization okay first we'll, we have already completed on the basis of development pattern that is primary secondary and the tertiary dentin and on the basis of pattern of mineralization we have globular or interglobular dentin tomes granular layer or sclerotic and transparent dentin okay now we'll study these three types of dentin on the basis of mineralization in details now first we have the interglobular dentin what are these interglobular dentin? It is the dentin which formed between the mantle and the circumpulpal dentin, and they are hypomineralized structures. They are hypomineralized. Okay. Also, the dentinal tubules passes in uninterruptedly via it. Okay, it passes uninterruptedly. 
नेक्स्ट वी हैव द टोम्स ग्रैनुलर लेयर व्हाट आर दिस टोम्स ग्रैनुलर लेयर दे आर द हाइपो मिनरलाइज स्ट्रक्चर एंड इट इज अ जोन एडजेसेंट टू द सीमेंटम एंड इट अपीयर्स ग्रैनुलर अंडर ट्रांसपेरेंट ट्रांसमिटेड लाइट ओके इट अपीयर्स ग्रैनुलर सो इट्स कॉमनली इट्स कॉल्ड ग्रैनुलर टोम्स ग्रैनुलर लेयर also this zone increases slightly in amount from the dentino enamel junction to the root apex and is caused by the collapsing and the looping of terminal portion of the dentinal tubules okay next we will move on to the our third part that is the sclerotic dentin what are these sclerotic dentins these sclerotic dentin are also called the transparent dentin and these are hypermineralized structures it is observed in the teeth of elderly people especially in the root portion in case of caries and attrition the or cavity preparation sufficient stimuli are generated causing these collagen fibers of apical crystals to begin appear the dentinal tubules this sclerotic this reduces the permeability so okay this sclerosis reduces the permeability of the dentin and helps in prolonging the pulp vitality okay now we will move on to the incremental lines in the dentin there are mainly three incremental lines in the dentin these are incremental lines of von ebner incremental lines of von ebner counter lines of ones and the neonatal lines now we'll study the each in detail now for the question is what are these incremental lines of von ebner these are the course of this line indicates the growth pattern of dentin okay the course of this incremental lines of von ebner indicates the growth pattern of dentin also the daily increment decreases as the tooth reaches to its functional occlusion okay and uh, distance between these lines varies between 4 to 8 mm in the crown and it is less in the root portion okay now we'll move on to the next incremental lines that is counter lines of wens okay what are these counter lines of wens these are occasionally some of the incremental lines are highlighted in due to the disturbance okay these are highlighted due to the disturbance in the matrix and in the mineralization process okay these lines are the demonstrated in the ground section and are known as counter lines of wens as per some of the inve uh, inve investigators so there is a controversy that in some investigators uh, believe that these are because of the coincidence of the secondary curvature okay now we will uh, uh, revise this topic that is what are these counter lines of wens these are mainly found because of the coincidence of the secondary curvature moving on to the neonatal line what are these neonatal lines these are the assinuated counter lines which separate prenatal and the postnatal dentins okay this dental matrix formed before the birth is of better quality than formed after birth so it is clear that these neonatal lines reflects the abrupt change in the environment during the birth now we will uh, go on to the next topic that is what are this theory of dental hypersensitivity it's a very important question uh, both in viva and in the exams so there are mainly three theories of these are direct or neural stimulation theory fluid or hydro dynamic theory and the transduction theory now we'll study each of these theory in detail first we have the direct neural stimulation theory what does this theory says it says that the stimuli reach from the nerve ending in the dentinal tubules okay the stimuli reach from the nerve ending in the dentinal tubules and they are directly stimulated causing sensitivity or pain okay next we have the second theory which is mostly accepted and the most popular which is the fluid or the hydrodynamic theory okay fluid or the hydrodynamic theory what does this theory says it says that the various stimuli such as heat cold mechanical or osmotic pressure okay various stimuli like heat cold mechanical or osmotic pressure affect the fluid movement in the dentinal tubules and these fluids stimulate pain mechanism in the tubules by the mechanical disturbance of the nerve and these nerve endings may act as a mechanoreceptors okay so these nerve endings act as a mechanoreceptor next we will move on to the third theory that is the transduction theory okay the what does this transduction theory th says this transduction theory says that the odontoblast process that is the odontoblast process is a primary structure excited by the stimuli 
this theory so says that the odontoblast process is the primary structure excited by the stimuli and that impulse are transmitted to the nerve ending in the inner dentin okay but this theory is not very popular can you explain why why this theory is not popular uh, this theory is not popular because there is no neurotransmitter basically in the odontoblast process to facilitate sinus there is no neurotransmitter so how does this nerve direct stimuli can come there is no neurotransmitting vesicle in the odontoblast process to facilitate sinus next we will go on to the last topic of today's lecture that is what is dentinogenesis okay dentinogenesis is mainly of two stages that is organic matrix formation and the mineralization also the dentin is laid down throughout the life okay first we will have to study the organic matrix formation what happens in this stage as a matrix formation continues okay as a matrix formation continues the odontoblasts processes uh, length tends okay as a matrix formation continues odontoblastic process length tends initially daily increment of 4 micrometers of the dentinal is formed okay mainly 4 micrometer initially but as the root development is completed after so after the root development is complete dentin formation decreases next we will move on to the mineralization step what happens in this mineralization step so in this step the earliest crystal deposition is in the form of regular and fine plated structure okay earliest crystal de deposition is in the form of fine plates of hydroxy apatite crystals on the surface of the collagen in a regular fashion it's very important to remember that it happens in a regular fashion also the crystal deposition takes place readily from the common center called what does this called spheroidal form it's a very important viva question what happens it is a spheroidal form next we will have a quick answer and question answer time that is what are von koch fiber we have already studied what are von koch fibers next what is dentinal leaves what are dental leaves and third we have what are dead tracts and fourth what are osteodentin these four questions are for your check whether you have studied it properly or not the downloaded you can download the pdf note from the description box in the video link so if you like my video then please subscribe the channel and hit the like button for in you may comment the answers in the description box and i will try to answer all the queries so like my channel share with your friend and comment your queries so if you like my channel please subscribe this channel for upcoming videos so thank you for watching